everybody, it's Tyler Edlin here. Now, one of the most frequent requests I get on this channel is, do you have any exercises for beginners to practice environment design? As it turns out, I do, and I'll be showing you that today. Uh, so without a doubt, design truly is the foundation of good art, whether it be for characters, environments, illustration, whatever the situation is. Composition itself is a huge part of this, and it's both technical and expressive. And when it comes to practicing, that can be a huge challenge for almost anybody if you're practicing wrong. So practicing anything well requires a certain degree of focus, whether it's in the gym, whether it's practicing being a better parent or spouse. Uh, but I feel when it comes to something like environments, which are technically more complex, they have perspective, there's lighting, there's depth, there's the elements of scale, texture, it goes on. I like to set up this first design exercise to basically remove as many of those components as possible so that students don't overburden themselves and dilute their training, at least when you're just beginning. Uh, and that is why when I set up my week one assignments in my classes, I like to try to propose the challenge of designing a scene using a singular shape whether that's a triangle, a square, or a sphere. And of course this means their, their form-based counterparts as well, you know, like a box, a pyramid, a cylinder. And I feel if you can't design a scene, you know, something visually interesting using just that singular shape, then you probably shouldn't be attempting to draw more realistic cityscapes, uh, fantasy castles, space stations, whether, whatever it may be. Start simple, keep it simple, and gradually amp it up. So let's just look at a few uh, student examples and go over uh, the details of this exercise. All right, so let's start with this first very basic example. And I'm sorry the student didn't include the name on the actual front of this, otherwise I would have given them credit. But here's like basic level what I look for. Can you set up a few just general kind of comps on the page, toss a bunch of cylinders into that, and just have it visually make sense? Now, with that said, contrast is the name of the game. Do you have big, medium, and small shapes? How is the rhythm and repetition and the pattern of those cylinders laid out throughout the, uh, throughout the scene and uh, comp? Some students approach this 100% from an abstract point of view. And I recommend that's probably the best place as any to start out, is to make something entirely non-representational, just to see if you can kind of sort shapes out and arrange them. Having a knowledge of perspective here does help, but I absolutely don't require it. And you don't see any sort of perspective grids or lines. These are all free drawn uh, and implemented cylinders. Now, what you see here at the bottom is a method that I do introduce this week, uh, or the first week, and that is the additive and subtractive. So that's the basic build building blocks when it comes to design for creating anything. Buildings, characters, props. Right, we add shapes together, we take parts of shapes away. So I do introduce that and let students use that technique if they want, otherwise they can just keep it simpler. So this is something you can scale as you improve. Start with basic cylinders, right? Start abstractly. All right, let's do abstractly but doing additive and subtractive. And then that eventually can move on to like a little bit more representational things, right? Where you start to see uh, students kind of create little bits of vehicles, you know, planes using massive cylinders, and of course mannequin figures, and that's what we see here uh, in, in this example. And so, right, that's just a little bit more of a challenge starting to amp up. So you start off with the page of the abstract, go on to a page of quasi representational stuff. And again, if you can draw visually uh, pleasing, at least to your own sensibilities, uh, scenes like this, you know, is there depth? Is there overlaps? Is there, uh, you know, space and, and spatial clarity? These are the things to kind of aim for when keeping this rather, uh, rather simple. Now we see uh, from uh, Tyler Bourne's example here, some students embrace this 100% where they try to build worlds and settings utilizing just the cylinders. So you can see some of them have a little bit of that additive and subtractive techniques. There is a knowledge and uh, representative perspective in these and there's kind of clear focal points and areas in them as well. But I think it's a great way to just get in there and practice environment design using very minimal and simple tools. Of course, you can do this digitally, you can do this traditionally, you can do this almost anywhere. 
that's how versatile it is. But ultimately, like uh, my fellow digital artist and instructor at TGMA, Mark Marco Bucci says, if you can draw good shapes, you're gonna have a good painting, right? You have a good painting, you can create good environments, you can create good illustrations, whatever it may be. So I strongly encourage students and anyone that's gonna try this, aim for really pleasing, uh, you know, shapes, as that is the foundation of some solid design. Here's just a few more examples. Now, everybody applies. Uh, Kind of approaches this very baseline assignment very differently and in, in all honesty it's your artistic voice that's going to be found through your application of these line shapes and forms when they're you know applied to a cylinder so you can drastically see different approaches different styles start to emerge from this you'll create habits habits build style over time but yeah you know just really fun try doing some organic ones like andy's here or maybe keep them entirely geometric like Tyler and this one down here, maybe introducing value as you progress with these. That's a, that's a way to start amping up the difficulty of this. Just imply, hey, the lighting is coming from the left or the lighting is coming straight from the top. There's an infinite number of ways to tackle this. Everything is an excuse to show depth, create overlaps, and emphasize those forms. Find and emphasize these rhythms. Now, I feel it's too hard to start out complex and then find simplicity in it. That's what I end up doing most of my time when I'm uh, critiques with student work is, is often just simplifying lots of the noise and the busyness out of things. So I definitely feel identify and construct your images with these basic primitive shapes. They are just visual tools. And when you use these visual tools of these simple primitive shapes, I think it's easier for beginners to effectively communicate what your ultimate message is. Find the big, large, medium, small shapes, the big, large, medium <laughs> rhythms, the thick to thin, the tall to short. Everything in life and in nature is made up of these primitive shapes in some form or another. So if you start out constructing simple and gradually ease in the complexity where you know necessary, you can, you can build almost anything to any style as well. Remember, it's best to start with lines, add lines together to make shapes, shapes come together to eventually make forms. And when you add forms and light forms, then we're really into, you know, environment design. So, again, I hope you all enjoyed this. Leave me any questions if you have any. If you have any requests for similar styles of videos that I can kind of put together rather quickly, absolutely let me know. Now, I, just to give credit where it's due, I believe I got the idea for this assignment from my good friend Antonio Steparts. He has an awesome channel. I'll link it below, but he runs Cutting Sketch Designs. Uh, be sure to pay him a visit when you have a moment. With that said, the channel itself hit 60,000 this week, so thank you everybody for your continued support. Thank you for checking out my video. You can support the channel if you'd like by subscribing, liking, or commenting on my videos. You can find me on the web on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Those are the social media outlets I utilize. I also teach two courses at the Computer Graphics Masters Academy, Architecture Design and the Fundamentals of Design. Feel free to check those out. Now, if the classes aren't few, I also teach one-on-one. -on -one. Join the hundreds of students around the world for one-on-one -on -one learning. And for more info, just send me an email. Also, feel free to join the Brush Sauce Discord community. There's links below. It's fun. We do weekly hangouts. There's the challenges. And it's a great place to make friends. Take care.